What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. We are here for part six of our Oakland Raiders flashback rebuild. And we are here at pick eight in the 2014 NFL Draft. And I took a pause after yesterday, last night's video, and said, you guys can let me know where we're going with the picks. And we had a couple options. For sure, we had a couple very interesting options. Mike Evans, debatably my favorite wide receiver in the NFL right now. Anthony Barr, freak of nature. OBJ, obviously not the biggest OBJ fan, but the, you know, the talent is immense. You had Kyle Fuller, Ryan Shazier, Zach Martin would go a long way on our offensive line. Brandon Cooks for a speedster. Johnny Football exists at quarterback. You know, we started this with the idea of a revival for Jamarcus Russell. And there's, there's, there's no, you know, as much as it's overdone on YouTube, as much as it's overdone for content creators it's you know i think it's exciting almost every time having a chance to try to like make johnny manzel into a good player um and there's also you know maybe the best player in the nfl at defensive tackle so i'll let you guys voices be heard to kind of set our draft board here there's a couple trade scenarios and stuff like that that was interesting however there was only one that made a lot of sense it made the perfect amount of sense considering when you look at the makeup of our team you know offense not bad you need maybe an art running back too oh no the defense absolutely could still use reinforcements at d-tack so going with your guys' opinions this is awesome very very excited to announce that at pick eight in the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft. And if you want to look back at my videos talking about the 2014 NFL Draft, I was an Aaron Donald truther. I was a believer. Now, I'm not arrogant enough to say I thought Aaron Donald was going to become the best player in the NFL. But a lot of people, there was more negative than there was positive about Aaron Donald because of his size. He was a defensive tackle, 6'1", 285. And I said, have you watched him play? He had like... 80 tackle for losses in his final year. He's unstoppable, and he was a top 10 player on my board. That being said, I would pray, if this was my board, if I was the general manager of the Raiders, and I know what I, well, yeah, even Zach Martin was really good coming into the game, but if, there is a very legitimate shot that this would be my pick anyways. You know, we didn't know in hindsight how good of a player Aaron Donald is. So that is the pick that we are making. He is 79 hidden dev, only number seven in true value again. You know, that, that's the style of these draft classes. These super hyped up players, we're still going to be the best players in these classes because we're using their actual rookie ratings. And Aaron Donald, that was his actual rating. It was still pretty damn good, but it wasn't the best. 87 strength, finesse move, 86. 84 speed, 90. Oh, get my God. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> For fun, I went back and looked at my 2014 draft videos. I really did like Derek Carr. And he is here in the second round. His teammate from Fresno State is also here in the second round, Devontae Adams. But let's reunite him. Let's reunite him. 69 hidden dev. 69 that was actually his rating as a rookie. 45 in true value at 40. We have a break glass in case of emergency if things don't go well with Blaine Gabbard here. So for this draft, I had a little bit of fun. I was, like I said, I was able to find some of my draft notes. Very, very old draft notes. But, like, this is where I actually still have on my computer, in my databases that I have. Wow, it sounds like such a nerd. Uh, players that I liked. So I'm not going to be able to do this every draft because this is the first run through of the 2014 draft. I drafted this as closely as I probably would have if I was a general manager. There was some good and some bad, given the board, right? It's not necessarily the players I thought were the best, and I got every guy that I thought was going to be good sleeper. These are just players that were available that I probably would have picked. So first round, I would have been sitting pretty. Aaron Donald, 79 with a hidden dev trait. Second round, we follow it up with Derek Carr, 69 hidden dev trait. Derek Carr was my sleeper quarterback of that draft class. Third round, Stanley Jean-Baptiste from Nebraska. Now... This was a time, you got to remember, 2014, the Legion of Boom was the biggest thing. And then this guy came out incredibly raw, but is a good athlete and six foot three. Everyone wanted a six foot three, six foot four corner because everyone wanted the Legion of Boom 
And I was like, I'm buying into the hype of Jean-Baptiste. He's not a bad player, 65 normal, but in real life, he turned out to be a bust. Fourth round, Dre Archer. I absolutely would have drafted Dre Archer. And it just made that much more sense because, you know, Raiders and speed. Fourth round, Dante Moncrief. Absolutely. Height, weight, speed. Would have got him. I remember Philadelphia drafted because we had Chip Kelly, Josh Huff. And I could not believe we drafted Josh Huff when Dante Moncrief and Martavis Bryant were still on the board. Height, weight, speed. It's what we needed. And then we got like some guy that was absolute garbage from Oregon. We got Aaron Lynch from South Florida, underrated edge rusher, 65. He's also a scheme fit. Craig Lawson from LSU, I thought was going to be a super underrated strong safety. He's only a 57. It was rough. We did need a safety to our team for on the depth chart. So, uh, you know, you, li- you, you, you live it and you learn. And I 100% would have drafted Trey Burton, 66, hidden dev tight end out of Florida. I remember when I made a video for the Eagles about what UDFAs the Philadelphia Eagles should have signed. I was like, absolutely get Trey Burton. I'm a Gator fan. He is legit. I mean, he's not prototypical by any means for the tight end spot, but he's a utility weapon on the offense. That's a great get here for our team. So ultimately, I think we're happy with a lot of the picks. I mean, Dre Archer's fun, but we brought in Carr. We got Aaron Donald. Let's get into year six. Oh, man. You ever, like, woke up, started recording around 11, right? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get five videos done today. I'm going to get so far ahead. I could just kick back and enjoy this playoff weekend. Oh, I forgot I had to fix the draft class. It's 3 o'clock now. But the 2015 draft class has been updated. Every player has their accurate Madden 16 rookie rating outside of... There was one or two that I couldn't find. I couldn't find... um, I couldn't find Cam Irving's rating. I also could not find the rating that Lakin Tomlinson had. But I got everyone... And Malcolm Brown, sorry. So yeah, Malcolm Brown, Lakin Tomlinson... And Cam Irving all have uh, assumed ratings. Everyone else has their accurate ratings. And look at this draft class. I mean, this was two highly, highly touted quarterbacks, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. Outside of the, I mean, there were some absolute studs. Very weak quarterback class uh, outside of the top there. But Todd Gurley was a beast. Melvin Gordon was breaking records at Wisconsin. Left, right, and center. We got David Johnson there in the third round. There's some good value. Wide receivers. Like, this was a draft class. That had a fair mix. Of bus, obviously, Kevin White, Nelson Aguilar, Brashad Perriman, Philip Dorsett, Devin Smith, DGB. Like, that is a long list of not great that are going to have an opportunity throughout maybe this Raiders series or all the other flashback reels that we do for these guys kind of to catch on. Um, yeah, so that is our draft class and where we need to get better. Where are we going to start scouting here just to get things rolling? Um, now I I do generally feel like our team across the board is solid. We just need to start building depth or we're, we're, we're deep, right? Trent Williams was like our, one of our first picks. He's 26, 27. We're going to have to start, you know, drafting for youth a little bit. So I think D end, I think we definitely could look at linebacker with the fact that Howard and Morrison both are on the wrong side of 30, unfortunately. So looking at the linebacker class, let's start there. Um, yeah, Jordan Hicks, Quan Alexander, Halohi Kika was outstanding at Washington. Never really panned out in the NFL. Not really a scheme fit, what we're looking for. But my God, Eric Kendricks, Bernardrick McKinney will be able to get Denzel Perryman uh, on the other side here. Shaq Thompson, Jake Ryan had a nice NFL career. But Shaq Thompson for sure is going to be one of our top targets for this draft. But that'll be it for now. We'll regroup, recap right before draft time at the end of the video. All right, we got some decisions to make. Getting real close to the trade deadline. We're one in five, and I feel like, you know, not to sweep the. I mean, one in five, man. You brought in a second round quarterback. This is usually about the point in time when you would give the keys to that second round quarterback. So sooner than expected, Derek Kerr is gonna get an opportunity. Maybe unjustly. Over Terrell Pryor, but let's be completely honest here with Terrell Pryor. We might as well make this move right now if we want him to be part of like long term. Let's make a wide receiver. I mean, you could debatably say Terrell Pryor was a productive and dangerous wide receiver for a little bit. He's a 60. So at least when it comes time to like re signing him, it should be a little bit more affordable. But I mean, you know, when you have one win and you're a team that's very talented and you look at, you know, Gabbard, who's not playing terribly but there's a lack of spark on your offense 
Um, you know, we'll see, just see if Derek Carr can get more wins over the next couple weeks or so. And then if, if he can't, then, then it is what it is. Also, another top demand request, whatever you want to call it, was at the trade, uh, at the at the draft, sorry, trade Namdi Asimov. Find someone who wants Namdi Asimov. And it actually makes a whole lot of sense right now because we're, we're it, it's not working out for us, right? It's uh, it's a little bit of a rough year, so let's find a team that can afford them. The 49ers can afford them. Staying in the Bay Area, what can we get back in return for Namdi Asuma? He's still one of the best premier corners. Can I get a first? I mean, old veteran corners still go for an expensive price tag here. I'm, I'm going to start with a first, and if it happens, I'm not even going to throw it up to cheese it. I just want to see if they'll do it. Ooh, okay. Can we get a second? We could probably get a second and a third. What? A second and a fourth? I'll figure this out. There we go. We're sending Nandy Asuma, our fourth and fifth round pick, to the San Francisco 49ers for a two and a three. That's fair. And it just makes sense, given the crossroads that we're at with the franchise, to you know downgrade from Asuma, get some value, but more so, it frees up room for Darius Slay, for Janoris Jenkins, and for Honey Badger to get on the field a lot and just transition to a younger secondary, a new era here in Oakland. So we're two and are we two and oh two and one? We moved to Derek Carr for the Chiefs game. Two and oh, we're two and oh since we went and made the change to Derek Carr. So from that standpoint, I'm happy that we didn't just stay there and did nothing because you know, not necessarily was Blaine Gabbert the reason why we were losing, but we needed that spark to quote Doug Peterson a la Jalen Hurts on the Eagles offense. Um, so that's good. Contracts. What do we got? Well, first up, we got Trent Williams, who we're absolutely going to pay pretty much any money. Like, if you didn't notice, we have $136 million. We have a phenomenal salary cap situation. Zach Miller has been a very, very consistent tight end. Uh, Leckler, again, he's a team legend, so we'll just keep getting him on these one-year deals as long as we can. So tell we do not have a replacement in place, but we need to start probably looking at it as he is 29. We'll give him a new deal. Ryan Kerrigan, let's get him to re-up. He's been our best edge rusher consistently over the last couple of years. Scott, oof. All right, here's where, here again, we'll much, Marcel Reese is a legend for the Raiders, so I'm trying to, I'll try to retain him if I can. There's, there's, a, there's an interesting thing right there. Is Gabbard set to be a free agent? So, you know, knowing that he's in a contract year and he's playing the way he is, it's, it's, it's definitely underwhelming. Mario Henderson, he's 29. I'm not going to give him a three-year deal if that's what he's looking at. I'd be much more inclined to give Trevor Scott, who's really developed and blossomed under us and kind of been a diamond in the rough. That only came to fruition because of this series. So it's good to have those guys that came out of nowhere. Like, that's that's the fun of doing a rebuild like this where you're going back in history is that you have a chance to, yeah, have players that like Aaron Donald, for example, that we know are going to be good, like Trent Williams that we know are going to be good. But every now and again... You'll get someone like a Trevor Scott where 95% of the people who watch this video have no idea who he is, and he just turned it on to become a superstar playmaker. But I don't like the terms of that Henderson contract, so we're going to be in the market for a new right tackle. Um, you know, Kirk Morrison, it, it comes to that point in time as well where it's like we have Vontez Burfecht who's waiting in the wings to become a new middle linebacker. I definitely want to re-up on Terrell Pryor. I think that's a project that I want at wide receiver. I love Seabass. I'll try to give him a one-year deal. So that, that'll be about it for our in-house signings here. Okay, well, since going to Derek Carr, we are 4-0. So figuring which game I should hop in to play. I don't always want to play a divisional opponent, so I kind of eliminated that Week 15 and Week 13 game. I mean, let's, I like beating up on the Giants. This is a winnable game. They're only 4-6, and six, even though it's on the road. So let's get our first taste of action with Derek Carr under center. And I look forward to seeing just what kind of damage Aaron Donald can do on the defensive side of the ball. Well, that was a punt. And eating alive. Jamie Collins comes through with the sack. Come on, man. We're going to keep the win streak. I can't hop in and be the end of a four-game winning streak. Can't let it happen. This looks good. This looks good. Hayward Bay should be able to get wide open here. Oh, yeah. Just too much speed. Way too much speed. 
on the outside. One of the league's best deep threats. Top five deep threat in the NFL, in my opinion. DHB. Oh, there we go. Miller right across the middle. It's a safe, easy, effective, efficient touchdown there for the rookie out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, what happens when you try to pick on Bobby Wagner? Oh, that's a hell of a pal. That's a hell of a ball. 27 yards, DHB. This game's looking ugly. We got to go for it. We got to get something here. For Fred X, Freddie Mitchell. Ah, oh, Miller with the catch. Yeah, we just lose more yardage. Throwing the move to Golden Tate. It looks actually phenomenal. Burn a timeout. Slant cheese because why not? You're in this big of a deficit. This may turnovers. Just make a play, somebody. Ah, oh, he's out of bounds. All right, we got this time slants again, but we got Golden Tate in the slot. That's where we want to try to fit this one in. Oh, we'll do it ourselves. We'll do it ourselves and go into halftime only down one score. Oh, oh, I know that, oh, that last one was so unnecessary. You did all the work. Great block by Marcel Reese out in front. McFadden gets in to tie this one up at 21 early in the third quarter. Maybe we have Hayward Bay on a linebacker. Ooh, ooh, Zach Diossi, who has like a superstar for some reason. Ooh. First down, this game might be over. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. That makes it 5-0 and oh. since Derek Carr's become a starting quarterback. 445 yards, three touchdowns. Oh, dueling. Eli Manning here, but look at that. Hayward Bay, six catches, 273 yards. Oh, I'm getting like old school pink slip vibes from this offense right now. So we finished the year one. We started one and five with Gabbert. We you know, last place in the division does sting, but seven and nine for Derek Carr. I think we feel comfortable that we've reunited history with our Madden save with Derek Carr now in the second round, being a Raiders quarterback, but he looks like he's the man to lead us forward. So I'm happy with that. Uh, we have the hidden dev trade of Aaron Donald. Not an X factor, only a superstar. Because, again, we're, we're, we're doing this understanding, like, at the time, Aaron Donald was supposed to be a great player, but we, no one knew he was going to be an epic player. He wasn't, uh, you know, can't miss, top three, number one overall type guy. So the fact that he's already at the end of his rookie year, an 88 superstar dev, gives me a lot of confidence going forward that he is going to be an absolute animal. We got Vontez Burfick on the field late as well as an outside linebacker. Let's look at the stats. I'm very interested to see how well Derek Carr played this year. Uh, obviously, he played, you know, six games less than anybody else. But assume if he put in six more, would he have just given him Blaine Gabbert stats over 4,000 yards, 37 touchdowns? Because that would be filthy. Uh, running the ball, almost 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns here for Darren McFadden. Reset seven. Three yards are getting a little bit of action there. 1,100 yards, 14 touchdowns for Golden Tate. 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns for DHB. Almost 1,000 yards for Zach Miller. Uh, a little bit of a disappointing year there for Lewis Murphy. Defensively, Howard and Morrison, yet again, dominant for interceptions for Kirk Morrison as well. 11 sacks for Ryan Kerrigan, 13 TFLs, 9-9 nine and nine for Aaron Donald as a defensive tackle. Very happy with that. Uh, really, I'll only just been with the interceptions. Between Janoris Jenkins, Darius Slay, and Honey Badger, I would have thought of maybe a little bit more than two interceptions total. Uh, still at a top 10 offense, so Tom Cable having a hell of a year. Hell of a unit. Carson Palmer is our MVP. Uh, let's just see if we have anybody representing the Raiders that made this list. Well, Blake Bortles, your offense rookie of the year with the Browns. Derek Carr, runner-up at number two. Dre Archer at nine. Sure. Defense rookie of the year with the CJ Mosley. Aaron Donald coming in at number four. And then for these individual awards, no Raiders. The dist. Respect.
respect. All right, let's get into the offseason. Super Bowl, let's just, uh, we'll do it because I, I want to see the death fairy. Super Bowl is Washington football team versus the Buffalo Bills. And football team gets their Super Bowl. It's pretty gross. But in terms of dev traits, very happy. Darren McFadden has gone from a star up to a superstar. Sure, we'll take that at 28. Late search. I think at 28, he was probably, what, on the Cowboys by now? Uh, Golden Tate went up a dev trade. I mean, he had a simply outstanding year, which that's 100% a legitimate dev trade increase for how good he really was. On the defensive side, we had a Ryan Kerrigan is now an X-Factor with the reinforcement ability. Again, he had an outstanding year, making his third straight Pro Bowl. That's good. That's that's real, real good. I'm happy with all of those dev traits that we were able to get. Uh, still have some money if we want to sign someone in free agency, but ultimately probably not going to be overly aggressive. He can enter two free agency here. There's nothing, again, it's uh, consistently getting guys that are 30 plus, guys that you would sign if it's going into your final year and you absolutely have to bring. Like I'm looking at maybe backup. Chris Ivory could make some sense. But, you know, I kind of like the, the intrigue of having Dre Archer, the fastest running back in the league back there, as RB2. We're good at wide receiver, even though you see getting a veterans, Bolden, Roddy White. Um, some, guys, some solid veterans on the offensive line, but I'm not overly worried. Best right tackle is the right tackle we let hit the open market, which is a little bit annoying. But at least that gives us something that we have to target in the draft, which is always kind of good. Uh, Vince Wolfork there, Jared Allen. I am going to try and bid on an outside linebacker here. Nigel Bradham, only 26, 74. No dev traits or anything like that. Just in case I can't get everything done that we want to in the draft. I feel like Nigel Bradham is solid depth and can start if need be. Um, Sante Samuels there in the secondary. Again, I want to go with our young guys, our young playmakers. Bob Sanders at strong safety. I'm still good with Mitchell. Kicker is another interesting one. Uh, I feel like we can just grab one in the draft. I have no idea what kickers are actually in this draft class, but I'm sure we could probably grab the best one. Hecker is here as a punter, but, you know, I'm not going to disrespect the guy. Even Marquette King's also there, but I'm not going to disrespect the god, the legend, Shane Leckler like that and bring in competition. So I'll just go for Nigel Bradham, and we'll use that into the draft. All right, got a fifth-year option. We're going to pick up Janoris Jenkins, fifth-year option here. Now he's finally going to have an opportunity to be a consistent starter, maybe even on the outside. All right, for this episode, fellas, we're just going to wrap up here at the draft as I do plan on recording another episode tonight. So it's not like I'm going to be able to get um, a bunch of influence or, or go for the top comment or anything like that. But I will show, uh, obviously, our team needs. We pick at 14 in the 2015 draft. We desperately need now a right tackle. We could also look at really bringing in a wide receiver three. For whatever reason, I thought, I swear to God, I resigned. Terrell Pryor. He's definitely still has a free agent. I can pick him up. Uh, but right tackle, we could say, you know, maybe if we're nitpicking, uh, I'm running back too, but I like Dre Archer. But I'd say right tackle, wide receiver could definitely get grabbed. You know, D end, just, just pr planning for life beyond Trevor Scott. He's 31. Uh, if there's a really, really good safety, hell, even, you know, linebacker. Howard's our best linebacker and he's 32. And obviously we think Somewhat highly of Vontez Burfick. We signed Bradham low-tier depth signing in free agency. So I would say linebacker, right tackle, and wide receiver are the areas I think we should try to address in this draft. So looking at the big board here, uh, running back, if we need an RB2, I mean, we got Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon. If we get into the later rounds, Tevin Coleman, David Johnson, Jay Jai, kind of our options there at wide receiver. It's very hit or miss, but again, I, I like being the, the land of opportunity. So even though Amari Cooper is easily the best wide receiver in this class and was at the time, if Kevin White, Devontae Parker, I would hate to get Aguilar as an Eagle fan, but hell, if he's still on the board, Perriman, Dorsett, DGB, Doriel Green, Beckham, you know, so many, you know, you can get later, but later on, James Crowder, you know, you know, I'll tell you right now. Uh, the, the greatest draft call I think I've ever made in the channel was I said Stephon Diggs was going to be one of the best wide receivers from this draft class. It's honestly probably the best and smartest thing I've ever luckily said about the draft. And it turned out true. So maybe I can get in position to get one of my all-time favorites. Like if he's still there in the third round, fourth round, I might consider Stephon Diggs. Uh, as, as far as tackles are, some options here. Aboye, DJ Humphreys, Rob Havenstein. Uh, we scouted Darrell Williams. He looks solid. Lael Collins is a UDFA. Remember, Lael Collins was supposed to go first, second round. And then there's something about like a murder as he went as a UDFA. 
So, I mean, he could be someone absolutely would fit the Raiders style of like, all right, he's a first rounder. Let's go grab him. Left tackle. There's some options here as well. Shreff, Eric Flowers, and Andrus Pete. Um, linebacker, Shaq Thompson. Definitely is going to be top of our board if he's still available. Anthony McKinney, Eric Kendricks, all legit options. Uh, Hicks and Quan Alexander as we get into day two. But yeah, uh, most likely, fellas, probably be out tomorrow. Maybe not. I might take a day break and get some Eagles franchise out to you guys. But the, the hardest thing is because obviously I don't know if I'm going to stick with 10 videos per rebuild. I, I don't really know. Again, I'm always looking for you guys' feedback on that. But this first run with the Raiders is always going to be the longest because it takes me probably two to three episodes that I could just record straight up just to make the draft classes. So once I do that first run through of updating every single draft class the way that I want it, every other rebuild from here on out, I'll be able to turn them out faster. And so most days you'll probably get a, you know, for example, if this was all done, you'd get a Raiders rebuild and the Eagles franchise tomorrow. So two uploads in one type day. So yeah, that is what's going on going forward. That is our draft. And this is where we are going to lead off. So thank you guys for watching. I mean, you can leave your prediction of who you think I'm going to draft in the first round in the comment section below. But your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoy. That's all I ask for on these videos is a thumbs up. Helps out my channel, helps out my videos dearly in the YouTube algorithm, which is actively trying to destroy my channel. So I appreciate everyone that hits that thumbs up. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow for some Eagles franchise.